So, Scotland are batting first. They look a much stronger outfit today, uh, Wayno. Well, we've got Fraser Watts opening the bat. He's um, played international cricket for Scotland. So, it'll be interesting to see how he goes today. And can he, can he add some firepower to the Scottish batting lineup? Well, there's a little half chance there. Uh, Fraser Watts has uh, gone for the first ball there off uh, KB. And it's flew down to Vahab here in uh, third man. He's uh, picked it up uh, very well on the bounce there. I think he had the gloves on yesterday. Um, they've made a change. They've been brought in Bridge. Uh, there's two brothers playing in the side. One's an offside, one's a keeper. Well, uh, Scotland uh, is a, it's a completely new opening pair way now. Uh, this is Rory Johnson. He's uh, a player from Forfarshire. Um, he's been sent down. He's part of the Scotland development team, just so people have got a bit of a background. And uh, very kindly sponsored by Cricket Scotland for him to be oh, down here. Oh, that's a great shot. You can see why Scotland have uh, got a vested interest in this one, Wayne. What a shot that was. Elegant. Very elegant. But fantastic to see Cricket Scotland supporting a young player like this, being able to play in a competition like this. I've heard big things about him. Well, this is a much better start already for Scotland. They, they really struggled early on. So KB the bowler. Oh, that's a slow ball bouncer. His foot got stuck in the, the wicket there. And the umpire signals one for the over. So what are actually the rules for bouncers? Uh, is, it, is there just one allowed in every yeah, over? Yeah, same as traditional cricket. Um, obviously, if the umpire feels it's above head out, he could call a wide. I think that is just below the, the regulation there. That's a wide. KB just taking a little bit of time to settle here. He came in and uh, smashed the ball everywhere, striking over 300 yesterday. 300 strike rate. Um, hopefully, looking to do it with the ball here. So that was five wides. That's just come racing past us in the commentary box here, into the chairman's house. It's disturbed uh, Chris Fleet's flower bed there. And Lee Dixon, the commentator, is going to fetch the ball. So Johnston, for those of you who don't know, in LMS cricket, wides go to the batsman. So he's off to a flyer, 15 or 5. Uh, when you get to 50 in LMS cricket, you retire. So we know a lot of people are going to be watching this game from India. We had uh, 80,000 hits on the, on the Pakistan-India game yesterday. Um, take, we'll take some beats in that stick bigger at a reach of 290,000 people so Sports Wiki the media partner from India they will be sharing these games across all their platforms so all the Sports Wiki viewers we welcome you to the broadcast so keep it up to the stumps here away now and it's Dwidge the brothers combination all well, the two brothers thought those out but no one else. Massive appeal for a run out on the back pitch there, Wayne. It's all happening here at the chessboard and quickly up. Fraser Watts just pushes it into the offside here. He's looking for a second. Dwidge moves brilliantly well. He saw that Captain Coley was maybe going to be a little bit slow off the blocks there. He's got a big area to cover, the captain. And Dwidge did the job there, keeping it to a single. Now there's an exciting addition to the Indian team today. Lee, can you talk us through the, the change that India brought into this game? Well, it's uh, it's fantastic news for this tournament. Uh, it's uh, ex-Test great player Wasim Jaffa. Yeah, where's he feeling? He's out at mid-off, isn't he? Just going to have a little note. Yeah, he is, yeah. I've uh, been lucky enough to play against uh, Wasim on a couple of occasions uh, where he's been pro uh, professional uh, in the Liverpool competition. Um, and he's just something else. He's a fantastic player. I'm really looking forward to seeing him in the second innings. So elegant, hits the ball very, very big. 
And I'm sure the Indian lads are delighted to have that little bit of extra quality added to the batting. Uh, well, Wasim Jaffa is going to bring a lot of experience to this outfit. It must just be absolutely fantastic for these Indian players, though. You know what? The, the Indian Test players are like rock stars in their country. Uh, like uh, the footballers in England, I know obviously the cricketers are very famous too, but uh, you know, the likes of uh, Virat Kohli, Dhoni get millions and millions of pounds in endorsements, have millions and millions of followers and back when Wasim Jaffa was playing in the Test team, which wasn't that long ago, he was playing with all these great players as well and he was certainly one of those guys. And I know that speaking to some of the Indian guys before the game, they were just absolutely delighted to have his knowledge and have some photos taken before the game. So, oh, Wasim Jaffa, he's fielding at a deep mid-off. And he's almost on the uh, on pitch two, um, where South Africa are taking on Singapore. Fraser Watts, international player himself. He's played a number of ODRs for Scotland. Oh, that's what uh, happened there. The bowlers has had an injury. The bowlers cramping up here. KB. And as this, as we have a break here, there's a wicket on pitch two. The South African game. South Africa versus Singapore on pitch two. And it's a key one as well. Well, you know. Uh, that's Vanit. Uh, he 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 would have retired, but he's been run out by Webster, which actually means Manpreet Singh will be batting as the last man standing here. He has uh, one ball short of two overs to get 20 runs on his own. Well, this is going to be an interesting. Obviously, we're we'll watching the LMS Scotland versus LMS India game, and I'm sure the viewers out there will be understanding why we cross over every now and then to pitch two because there we're going to have a very exciting thing finish south africa one of the favorites for this tournament but after yesterday singapore have gone up in their value and manpreet singh he's been one of the star players of this tournament already he's the captain he's on his own though so he's gonna have to do it how much does he need in this just 20 more runs uh in nine balls uh, but he's uh, he's been hitting it superbly well and obviously he knows he's got the opportunity for that home run at the end as well. So last man stands when the seventh wicket falls, he bats on his own. And this is Jay Beatty on the far side coming in, left arm bowler, likes to swing the ball into his pads. So we watch this delivery. Oh, and uh, Manpritz, square of the wicket. So uh, Wazim Jaffa's come on here to bowl. As... Uh, the pictures will uh, come back to the uh, first pitch here at Chester Boughton Hall. Just to give you an example here of uh, the kind of legend that Wasm Jaffa is, he scored over 18,000 first class runs at an average of 50. A top score of 314 not out. Now that is uh, something else, Wayne. You know what? I've, I haven't, I've seen him obviously play on TV, but I've never watched him live. This could be run out. And Fraser Watts putting in the long strides in there and then he's eventually home safely. I get this, uh, this game's really going to heat up as, as the game goes on. It, it must be quite difficult for the players because I, I'll be totally honest with the viewers at home. There's 80% uh, of the ground have just turned to watch the last uh, over of the uh, Singapore and the South Africa game. There's a fantastic atmosphere building there as Watts just punches it down the ground. A little half chance there was in Jaffa there. But uh, just a of his reach here. I like the sunglasses that was in Jaffa's got on you. This looks slick. I'm sure they'll make it into the LMS club shop at some <laughs> point, why now. <laughs> but uh, I think quite a lot of the teams may actually have learned just a, a little bit about from what Wales did. As uh, Manpreet Singh on the back pitch hits another oh, six. six. Oh, this is exciting finish on his own there. How much does it? How much is needed to win there, Lee? You, you've uh, got the live scorecard there. Trying my best here <laughs> to keep up with all the different games. He's on 61, not, not out off 38 balls. And this is quite unbelievable stuff here. They need just 10 runs off six balls 
to turn over the might of South Africa. Yeah, so obviously we're going to try and cover both games here. Yeah. Oh, we've got a new angle there as well. New angle. This is going to be exciting here. Yeah. Jay Beatty, all the way from Pretoria. Dot ball. It's the last over. Ten runs to win. This is going to be some really skillful production work from our <laughs> team in the uh, the unit here, trying to track two games at once. Uh, but Quippy TV on outstanding production. You know, they know what they're doing here, sir. They're giving us great footage of both, both games. Well, watch just punch one down the ground there from Dwidge. He bowled really well yesterday, Dwidge, and it must be nice to have his brother behind the stumps there. We're in the number 100. That's it. Yeah, a little cut shot there. So, Twitch, the bowler, his brother's got number 100 on his back. He was um, rested yesterday, he's coming to the side. Good left hand batsman. That's a lovely shot from Watts, isn't it? He, he's probably not got full value for that. He's hit that straight to the field. He's pushing the two. This is great running from Watts. He just noticed the slip. Now, the Indian team, definitely from yesterday, Wayne needed to improve in the field. That, that was key. And as we look here, the first ball of the last over, he's just picked up two, a little push off his pads. Van Vake the bowler. With a, Cameron Fry got injured earlier there. So we. Oh, yes. That's the quality that the Scottish team certainly missed yesterday, Wayne. Fraser Watts going big there. But we're staying on pitch two yet. Four balls to go. Van Vake, Jaman Singh, last man stands. Where's that gone? It's up! It's up and it's over! It's six! Six more for Manpreet Singh! As uh, Watts <laughs> just pushes it down to, to long off. I'm really sorry for any of the Indian and Scottish viewers. Uh, we'll we'll come back to this game. You can't blame that. They need two to win of three balls. But remember, you can't push any singles. So we'll see out the end close of this inning. So all the viewers tuning in for the India-Scotland game will be back shortly to this game. Um, still at least three to, three to win on that back pitch three to win Manpreet Singh 69 not out of 41 balls the captain of LMS Singapore following on from four overs two for 16 what a start to the tournament this lad's had has he done it he's just put it? he's pushed it into the uh The crowd it's shot for four. Singapore won. LMS Singapore. What's happening there? LMS Singapore celebrate. Manpreet Singh. What an upset. They've run onto the field. That's great scenes, that, isn't it, Wayne? Unbelievable scenes. And that just opens up that group up so much with that result. Yeah, um, that's an incredible result. Incredible player, Manpreet Singh. So well done to LMS Singapore and lucky to LMS South Africa. Um, Singapore now unbeaten. I think that may have just gone a fraction finer. The man's come round again. Good slide and stop and in it comes. So we'll we'll stay on this field now. Um, uh, we into the second over for so we're into the third over of Jaffa. Jaffa comes in again. Watts just works it into the leg side for a single. I'm sure this uh, Manpreet Singh, who's uh, just led his side to a victory, the uh, Singapore team are huddled in the middle of pitch two there. He's going to get an amazing reception coming back into a packed uh, Chester Pavilion there. So this is great bowling from Jaffa. Have we, ever, have we seen a look at Wazim Jaffa's international bowling figures? I know he's more renowned for his batting, but does, does he have any international um, wickets, test wickets, any ODR wickets? Well, I know he's uh, been known to bowl a few overs over over time. I wouldn't say he's uh, necessarily known for uh, taking wickets. He's got two in test cricket and two in first-class cricket, Wayne, so four wickets. 
but uh, as with a lot of these professionals, uh, they spend all the time bowling at other great players, so when they step out of first class cricket, you can be a really handy bowler. Talking of international cricketers, Fraser Watson struck. Played a one's offside, that's going to be four. This is a, a really, really good start from Scotland. You go back to yesterday, they, were, they had the heart of the top order ripped out by Adil Hussain's uh, vicious opening spell. But they seem a lot more confident here playing in the middle of the afternoon. Watts and Ferguson, oh sorry, Johnson have really settled into the work. And it's uh, 46, the score at the moment, going on to 47. Watts 27 off 16 and Johnson 20 off 11. It's the day of the bowler. He's dragging that one down. Nice start from the keeper here, Wayne. I think he uh, obviously they've looked to make a small change uh, to the keeper from yesterday, and uh, I think a few other sides have started to realise on this front pitch that the keeper's got a real key, key role. I'm very surprised they left him out. He's an accomplished batsman as well. Doesn't maybe have the firepower of some of the other guys, but he can hold the innings together. Left-hander as well, so gives him something a little bit different in the batting as well. Anurag just looking to go wicket to wicket here. Not quite got uh, his execution right there as the keeper skips across and uh, takes the ball as the umpire sing singles the wide. Pushed out by Watts. On Wasim Jaffa. Great commitment there. It's really good to see these marquee players putting their bodies on the line, Wayne. That's exactly what the uh, the players of their countries want to see. They're not here just to make the numbers up. They're yeah. here to make a real difference and inspire those cricketers. Yeah, so Wasim Jaffa leading from the front there. Showing the guys he's prepared to dive around. Hopefully uh, the rest of the Indian fielders will be uplifted by that. Was it on the first day? So the first match? <laughs> the Scottish team will be a lot happier with this. They'll be looking to post a score in the region of 160, I think. Yeah, minimum. As that's been uh, punched off the back foot by Rory Johnson. Ooh. Into the outfit. Oh dear. Just as uh, we've been praising the uh, improvement in the Indian field, uh, the ball's just ran through the fielder at long off and gone for the boundary. Well bowled, well bowled. A little turn and bounce there. Plenty of purchase there for Vahab. As the ball's punched out it towards uh, point. We're going to come back for two. They've, they've decided against it. It's a good bit of fielding out there. So Baba Singh, leg spinner. Well, three balls for five runs. That's a quicker one. On, oh, that's classy shot from what? He's taking that off middle stamp. He's been very, very clever of how he's put this innings together so far, Wayne. Just manoeuvring the ball around the ground. I think he's uh, obviously watched Marcus North in the Australia game. North batted exceptionally well by just manoeuvring the ball around the field, taking very few risks. And that's going to be four more. There's the oh no, well, cut off. This is better from India in the field. So, combination of Dridge and the, the former international Jaffa combining there. So, uh, I've noticed uh, a few uh, slightly older fellas heading down to the Nets wearing their uh, national jerseys. Wayne, is the is it a Legends tournament here? Yeah, Masters. There's a Masters. Masters. Masters, yeah, for the, the slightly older gentlemen. 
And Blake van der Linde there. He looks in good condition. Just, just in celebrating their win. England had a great win yesterday. I mean, earlier today. Great shot from Johnson there. The uh, Scottish development player. He looks very, very strong in that area, away, and He's played two absolutely superb shots through the cover point region. I think the India bowlers need to just be a little bit wiser there, maybe just come a little bit straighter at him, test the stumps. Yeah, 31 from 17 is a great start. Wide ball. <laughs> India desperately need a wicket here. You can, you can hear the, uh, the fielders just struggling uh, to get going here. As uh, Johnson's punched into the outfield, he's got to look for two. Watts has come back, put pressure on the outfielder, very, very good running. Kanish out there. Seventy without loss here, Scotland. This is a very, very different scoreboard from yesterday. Watts went right across his stumps there. That is an unbelievable take from the wicketkeeper there. He would have been completely unsighted. Most keepers would have taken the eye off there. I certainly would have. He's massively in the game, this keeper. Very excited there. He's nearly demolished the stumps. But that's the sort of intensity that uh, India need to show, Wayne. You yeah. Know, desperate for a wicket here. One of the younger players in the side. He's um, played in a team in Mumbai. They got to the, the final of the Indian National Champs last year, and that's how he got selected to represent India. Th thanks to Sachin Bajaj, who actually sponsored his flight to come over. Push it to. It's a better from India. Backing up in the field. Good from Dwidge. Good game awareness. And that's going to be run away for four. I think he's just got a little tickle on that way now. Yeah, he's just got a bottom edge. Don't think he meant to go as fine as that. So this is setting a fantastic platform for the Scottish side here. They'd have been looking for a massive improvement from that uh, game against England. And they're certainly getting it at the moment. They'll be looking for a score well in, a, in excess of 160 at the moment. That's well bowled. I can see why he's going for that shot because the pace of the ball spinning with it's a free hit in terms of you can't really get out the line he's bowling. Also as well, uh, Coley as captain, if I was him I'd be looking to move myself quite fast away and he's left yeah. himself in a massive area. <laughs> Come on, um. <laughs> so, a lot of excitement there, but uh, I don't think Fraser's fo what's foot left the crease. It'd be interesting just to see on the replay, wouldn't it? Just to see uh, if the keeper's just getting a bit overexcited or whether he's got a case there, Wayne. He's passionate, that's for sure. This is a great over, spinning. There's no one at the keeper's end here, surely you look for two. And a little fumble from Coley. Allows Watts to get back for the second. So five bobs bowling a great little spell. Yeah, getting the ball to turn. A little bit unlucky. His figures haven't done him justice, but that was a really good over. So the projected score, 173. Scotland will be happy with that. Fraser Watson, 42 from 27. Rory Johnson, 36 from 21. He's got a good future in the game, does Rory Johnson. Oh, 
highly thought of in Scottish cricket circles and can see why. Well, what's we looking to get to his 50 as quickly as possible here, or will he, he make sure he gets to his retirement here, Wayne? Uh, 9.1 over is gone. I think you could probably make an argument either way. Uh, he's on 42 now. I think he can keep going. I don't think it's any need for him now to to keep a wicket in hand because they haven't lost any. The chances of him getting back are quite slim. Obviously, he'd rather be not up. I don't think he wants to take off his foot of the gas. The quicker he gets to his 50, the better. Bowler really wasn't happy then, was he, with that bit of fielding at long off? It's just gone gone down there for four and complete misfielding. Just means Scotland at the moment are uh, completely in the ascendancy here in pitch one. Yeah, oh, you could say that, but uh, India have got the great Wazim Jaffa in their lineup, so they will feel they can chase anything here. They'll probably think they can chase down 300 with Wazim Jaffa in their side. And you're right, Wayne, isn't it? Having a player of that quality does completely change the mindset. That's four more for Johnston. And we've seen quite a few times where uh, there have been uh, positive opening partnerships where obviously two batsmen have retired. And then all of a sudden there's a complete shift change as two new players have to get in at the same time. That's good. So well, to all those viewers in India who are joining us and haven't heard about last man's stands, Last Man Stands is an eight-a-side T20 cricket league. Uh, it's open to cricketers of all abilities, to all regions. All you need is eight mates. Well, you actually technically only need seven mates plus yourself. And you can form a team. You go onto the website and you register lastmanstands.com join. There's a region near you. If you find that there isn't a region near you and you want to get involved, are they in an administrative position where you want to run a local leagues? There's a franchise opportunity potentially in your area, which would mean if you're passionate about the game and want to be involved in expanding the Last Man Stands format and getting more people playing cricket, then go to lastmanstands.com franchise. If you're just interested in playing, have a look at our website, lastmanstands.com join. We, we've just started in Alamos India for just over a year, but Last Man Stands as a format has been around since 2005, started in London, and we're really excited to see LMS India expanding Do you have some over the next few years, and who knows, you could enter a local league and end up representing your country. We hope to spot new talent, but more importantly, we hope to get more people opportunity to play the great game of cricket. So just a small delay here as we swap ends after 10 overs. LMS Scotland are 89 for none. Fraser Watts is on 47 not out and Rory Johnson is on 42 not out. And it's fair to say that LMS India are in desperate need of a breakthrough and they've turned to Kartik at the city end here at Chester Borton Hall Cricket Club where the weather again is just absolutely fabulous. And everyone who's come down so far for this LMS World Cup has thoroughly enjoyed the event and we're only at the infancy of the week. Yeah, that's right, and uh, Scotland, they will um, be looking to make amends from yesterday. As Johnson pushes out to the onside. He's set off again. I'm not sure the fielder saw it in the deep. He's turned. He's come back for two, come to Watts' end. Could be an opportunity here for Johnson to retire before before Watts here. Well, they're matching each other. Pretty much exactly the same strike rate. That's a lovely shot. No fielder down there. The ball races away towards where pitch two is down there, which uh, only 10 minutes ago saw the end of, uh, I'd, I'd say, the most dramatic game so far in this World Series which saw LMS Singapore and the man at the moment, Manpreet Singh, uh, turn over South Africa on pitch two. Yeah, that was an unbelievable knock on his own, needing 20. And uh, he did it for his country. Everyone back in Singapore will be very proud of him. And uh, Manpreet is certainly one of the players to watch out for as this tournament progresses. 
Carter comes in again from uh, this city end. And he's just uh, tried to make amends there and adjust his line. He's just pushed it too far outside the off stump and it's, it's a wide ball. We've got uh, Raul Kohli in front of us here, the captain of India. That's going to be two more. <laughs> These two are running well between the wickets, showing that last man stands isn't it all about big hitting, tactical and, awareness. And that's 50 retired for Rory Johnson. So Raul, don't know if you can quickly come and have a quick word, yeah? Uh, while we look at the... Uh, no, so we've got Raul, so. um, cousin of Virat Kohli. Raul, talk, talk me through the start chip. What are, what are you going to do now to try and extend the tide? We are just trying to ball uh, good. Actually, I was trying with a new baller today for a spin attack. So let's see. Yeah. Till now, it's a decent score. What score will you be comfortable chasing? Chase yeah. So somewhere around 160. I'm, I'm hoping to get it between 160 somewhere. Do you think 160 can be? You, do you think you can restrict to them 160 here yeah, from the last? I, I, I'm sure I'm, I, I'm going to do it. Okay. And uh, have you got any star batsmen in your lineup to come? Hmm? Have you got any star? Yeah, we, we we got the star batsman also today. Okay. So he'll be opening for us. Okay. okay. Good luck. Catch could be coming your way. You better get on the field. <laughs> That was a uh, fantastic insight there from uh, Captain Raul Coley, who uh, was so committed to giving us that insight. He just about got onto the field <laughs> before the ball was bowled. <laughs> I'm sure that would have gone down when it had come down this way. Away now, we, we, we could have been in a bit of trouble there. The batsman might have claimed he never knew there was a fielder there. He was hiding under the tent. No, Kanishka uh, uh, went up massively on the appeal there. No. Uh, we'll watch, hopefully, get the, uh, the replay. Now, just to see what uh, all the appeal was about. He's just having a little chat with the umpire there to see what, you know, why that was turned down. And it's also the end of the over. Singh has joined Watts at the crease. And he plays for the Southern Sixers. And at Edinburgh South CC. From all over. This is not the best of India. I know we were saying yesterday on commentary that uh, Scotland's an ever growing uh, LMS region. But there's still opportunities to uh, <laughs> set up new leagues and join new teams there. Yes, Paul Reddish and Colin Mills doing a great job. As Fraser Watts heaves away. That should be four. That's gone for four. And that's for Watts' is 50. So two men in the hat now. Raul Coley saying there that he would have been happy to restrict them even now, Wayne, to uh, 160. Uh, we heard Marty Henderson before uh, tell us that Wales were going to get 100. <laughs> and, they, and they made uh, nearly 140. Um, I think if they keep them to 160, I think Scotland will be extremely disappointed. Uh, I'll eat my hat if they keep them to 160. And uh, judging by your hair, Wayne, I think your, your hat <laughs> is an important tool that you've got. So uh, I'd... Uh, <laughs> I hope for your <laughs> sake that he get past that score. Good, 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 good from you, bud. <laughs> well, it well, you know what? I might. I hope I don't have to eat my hat, but there's two new bats when you said so might take a, a bit of time for them to get in. But if Scotland finish with 160 from this position, they'll be highly disappointed. We've got leagues in Edinburgh, Glasgow. Just to interrupt you there, the new batsman for Scotland is uh, Farid. Or Farid. I think I'll go with Farid. He uh, he bowled very well yesterday with absolutely no luck at all. Looking to add some quality with the bat today. Coley just deceived him fractionally. He tried to work it into the leg side. Just a little lead and edge. The ball trickles down to Wazim Jaffer at long off. It was a good start from Coley. Uh, yesterday, he was a bit short at times. He's got to keep it up there at his pace. Doesn't want to be dropping it short. Keeper was very, very keen to signal to the umpire that's come with the shoulder. He doesn't want to be having the bars going against him. Some excellent running there from Singh and Fred. He's a US citizen. India has shown here that when they've got the line right, there is opportunities to create some pressure and chances. Just got to string together two, three, four balls in a row just to create a bit of pressure, create a chance. 
We've got Rasim Jaffer playing for us. Oh yeah. Yeah, there he is. Well fielded down there, third man. I know who he, know who he yeah. is, yeah. Really well fielded. Judge that nicely. Be interested to know who uh, that gentleman yeah, yeah. supports down there, uh, Wayne. Um, looks like to be sporting a kind of a cross between a Sri Lanka shirt and a. Oh, He's got Wales trousers on. <laughs> People from all over the world here supporting their teams. As Captain Coley comes in here wearing the number 99 shirt. Just goes onto the hip of the batsman. It's rolled down to fine leg for a single. Probably 85, 90. Oh, you cleared the second down. Yeah, yeah. Well, he hit the roof of the second house on the end. So we've got um, Gavin Burns asking: Is Gavin Dean playing for Scotland today? Lee, do you know any news on on the Scottish lineup? Well, uh, Gavin Dean uh, isn't part of the eight today. I know uh, some of the Scottish supporters will be. Uh, Really gutted about that. He was a standout performer yesterday for Scotland. He got a couple of wickets. He, he swung the ball, opening the opening the bowling, and uh, he also um, got a few runs and made the, the total a little bit more respectable with the bat. So it appears that uh, he wasn't available. They definitely wouldn't have left him out. So I'm, I'm presuming he he wasn't available for some reason today, whether that's uh, injury work or whatever that is. So, but uh, the two replacements he brought in of. Uh, Certainly done the job so far in uh, Rory Johnson and Fraser Watts. <laughs> so Bob, Bob, the bowler, by the time leg spin, very, very slow through the air. But he's, he's making the batsman hit the ball up the slope. So they're hitting up the slope against the spin. It's not easy. And then just a quicker one. He adjusted really well there. I think he saw... Uh, Farid go down, looking to play something more expansive than that, and he's just fired that through uh, in towards the stumps. So he's had to adjust the batsman there as he comes into bowl again. That's going to be another wide. And uh, Raja Garu Mahan is asking Terence Bosco, is this Wasim Jaffa, the former Indian international player? And that's four more. Singh has uh, got off to a great start here. He's now 12 off six. Blistering drive from a low full toss there that's just gone through the extra cover region. Raja Guru, we can confirm. Yes, it is uh, Wazim Jaffa, the former international test player. Um, Terence Bosco. Um, I don't know how you know Terence, but as you know, Terence is involved in LMS Coimbra Tour and doing a great job with the leagues out there. It's just starting to get a little bit sloppy out here for LMS India. Uh, the keeper's been excellent so far. Uh, the bowler's just forced that one through. Big spin. And uh, he just hasn't got his gloves to and it's raced away again. So, Scotland here on for an absolutely mammoth total. I think... Uh, Raul Coley's uh, 160 is looking extremely bleak. I think your hat's going to be safe, Wayne, as uh, Scotland must be looking at 180, 190. I think this Indian, they, they're just short of bowlers in the side. They're, I think they've got a few batsmen with firepower, but they're, they're missing a, a bowling all-rounder here. They need a, a man they can go to under pressure, and they don't seem to have one. That's gone. That's in Falcons Lane. We nearly had a crowd catch there as it smashes into the back of uh, one of the cars there. I'm pretty sure that uh, the young man Joe Cloran who took the crowd catch off Abdul Razak yesterday, I think that's his car. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that he's not meant to leave it there when there's a cricket game on as well. So I'm sure his, uh, his parents are going to be delighted with that. You think they pay for the insurance on it? I'm pretty sure that they pay for the insurance on the petrol. <laughs> <laughs> but what a lovely family anyway so I'll leave uh, that chat about Joe Cullorans car insurance for another day as uh, Coley comes in again to sing it's gone straight up oh, the and safe 
I thought that the, the keeper hadn't seen where it landed there, but he had uh, gone a good 20, 30 metres uh, past him. So, we've got MTS Ali tuning in. He says, Azad Amir, number nine for Scotland, plays in LMS Glasgow. Plays for Well Foundation CC. Thanks for that bit of insight, MTS. I think his uh, cricket club's Edinburgh Academicals as well. I don't know who that was on uh, Facebook, just see if I'm right though. Maybe a bit of extra knowledge. And Shikska uh, says Coley 99, that's correct. Coley, Raul Coley, he's the cousin of Virat Coley, he's captain in this Indian team, he plays his um, LMS cricket in Gurgaon, Chris Chatwell, will be very proud of um, a lot of the, the players that come from LMS Gurgaon, they represent in their country and they also represent LMS Gurgaon, where LMS in India first started. Oh, that's a beautiful shot down the ground, and that crashes into the side screen. Scotland really starting to put the foot down now. Yeah, it's looking like 190 here. I think from here, 190, maybe even 200. I think they'd be disappointed with 190, Wayne. Since I'm not sure what the firepower they've got at 5-6, but... Oh, I agree with you, they're going to be disappointed with 200 from here. Uh, and back into that housing estate again. That's six more. Farid looking extremely dangerous here, striking just under 300. 28 off 10 balls. And Vahab's figures are just starting to deteriorate quite quickly here as uh, he's gone for a couple of sixes. So, LMS Scotland were well, disappointed they couldn't put this side out against England yesterday. Got someone uh, there, it's uh, Justin Fenwick Wayne asking, is there a Zimbabwe team playing? Um, not in this one, but we, we're we looking to expand the LMS World Series in the future. We, we've we got a, le a lot of Zimbabwean players playing in our London leagues, so it was something we considered, but we, we stuck to the 12 countries where LMS is played. Um, and after this event, we'll reassess and work out how we can expand that. You know, we're going to be starting LMS in Namibia soon. We've got a small league in the Netherlands. We're even going to be starting in Afghanistan. So we would like to expand to to what they call the, the developing cricket nations. You just mentioned... Uh, oh, and that's wow. Steve Dewey. It's uh, four more for Farid. Vahab did this yesterday as well. Uh, when he got hit for a boundary, he just went to a slightly quicker ball. That was telegraph there, and uh, he's just worked that way through square leg. What a lovely pickup that was. I just stayed down on it. Yeah, uh, one of the guys there just... Uh, obviously oh, it's flicked up his legs. This is great batting. The fielders moved from mid-wicket to square leg, and then square leg back to mid-wicket. Where's he going to go now? I think they're just going to check whether that's six or four. So while we have a look at that, well, that's one from earlier. So Justin Fenwick's asking how teams qualify. We'll come back to this after this ball. You mentioned that uh, maybe you're looking to get something uh, going more in Holland. Uh, fantastic place to play cricket uh, been lucky to go on tour there a couple of times and uh, play at U the Utrecht Cricket Club they're very very passionate over there Wayne about the cricket and uh, they have some very good professionals as well as you know there's a speaking about the Zimbabweans uh, Brendan Taylor yeah, he played the Grand Taylor's played quite a lot out there as well so uh, you know Holland is a, a hotbed of a uh, of cricket and uh, I'm sure they play a very attractive brand I know they talk about sexy football Rude Hullet 
<laughs> in Holland. So, you know, hopefully LMS uh, starts to take off there also. That was a good question by Justin. There's no formal qualification process. We've got leagues, LMS leagues in 14 countries. So the core reason for LMS existence is participation to create opportunities for people to play this game. Right, there's going to be a chance here. Kanish underneath it. He's took the catch. So did, did Singh get back for the steal? Yeah, no, he, so just for those of you who are a bit confused as to what happened there, in last man stands rule, there's an opportunity for the non-striking batsman to steal two runs when there's been a catch. He has to go all the way to the keeper and back. But if he doesn't make it, he can be out under a double play. So um, I think he thought about it for a bit there. The, the field was away, away and he got it in. So in LMS rules, there's LMS has got its own unique variations of the of of cricket, but it's designed to ensure that everyone gets game time. So just coming back to Justin's question, as we expand leagues around the world, every sort of master franchise will have the opportunity to enter his country into the tournament. So if and when, or when we get leagues in Zimbabwe, there'll be an opportunity for the Zimbabwean management team to enter a team into what we call the World Series. This is the first time we've actually ha had the LMS World Series. The new batsman uh, for Scotland is Asad Amir. I know someone uh, wrote in before, mentioned he plays for the, the Well Foundation. Could be a run out here. Well, he's given him. He's given him. Well, that's a bit of a disaster. He's literally just come out to bat. There seems to be a mix up there, and uh, Coley's uh, dealt with it straight away. Did he face any balls? I hope he did. There's nothing worse. It's, it's not likely. No, he did face one. He's pulled it into the leg side. He's fancied a second. Singh hasn't, and he's dropped his bat as well. It's just a. <laughs> We spoke about maybe putting together a bit of a, a bloopers reel at the end of the week. Just, you know, those moments which are just, it's not poor cricket, it's just bad luck. You know, you drop your bat, you don't mean it. And uh, I don't think Asad Amir will want to watch that one back. We've had actually a few people drop their bets so far this week. So and it happens to the best of us. Just had a tweet uh, from uh, Upton Cricket Club. We had uh, their chairman on before with you, Wayno. I know he thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, and he gave us a great insight. Oh, this could be close. Another run out. So this is getting interesting now. Huh? India fighting back hard. This is really good to see. Good, great arm there at the boundary. Dwidge into his brother. Dwidge is feeling that deep backward point. His brother's the keeper. This is always an interesting scenario when you've... Uh, just been run out by one of your teammates and then they get out almost straight away so you're yeah. both in the changing rooms together always makes for an interesting discussion I think that might be sitting on opposite ends <laughs> um, but Fraser Watts in the hat Scottish international player they won't be too worried about that Johnson also in the hat um, Johnson is on the Scottish cricket radar yeah, he plays for the Scot Scottish development team and uh, Cricket Scotland, have, uh, I've mentioned before, kindly uh, subsidised his trip down here to be part of the LMS uh, World Series. And he's um, he's given them full value already. I think he's already would have learned from batting with Fraser Watt. So yeah, it was great to chat with Jez Lamb. I know that he does a great club job with Upton Cricket Club and. As I said earlier, we wish them luck in their in their bid to get into the Premier League. Have they ever been in the Premier League? Uh, not since it's gone to a uh, three-tier split. Uh, when it was uh, two uh, leagues of 24, they did play in the top division. But since it's gone into th three teams of 12 and obviously the full Cheshire Pyramid, they certainly haven't. And uh, just as there's a, a wide from Coley there, and the batsman, the new batsman is, well, the two new batsmen are Bainbridge and Ferguson. Bainbridge 
was uh, at the opening ceremony representing Scot Scotland alongside Colin Mills. The rest of the, the team was only able to make it on the Sunday. So, so just, just, can you just, obviously we're watching LMS England play, LMS Scotland, all amateur players besides Wasim Jaffa. But can you just explain where we are in the world and a little bit about the local cricket scene as we continue to watch this game? Yeah, well, you know, uh, obviously here in Chester, we're in a part of the world called Cheshire. Um, and uh, there's a number of uh, Premier League competitions, the ECB uh, run outside of first class cricket. Uh, obviously, we have the main counties such as Lancashire and Yorkshire. They're probably our closest to. And uh, then they run a, a minor counties competition. Uh, Cheshire are currently playing down in Cornwall today. And it looks like uh, an excellent game, just as uh, Scotland managed to steal a, another run there. Very, very clever play from Bainbridge there. As the, I'm not really sure what the bowler... The, I think the bowler tried to go to the keeper's end and stopped halfway. And yeah, <laughs> they're, they're brothers, so these things happen with brothers. They've probably done that in the back garden a few times as well. At least uh, I'm not the only person who uh, doesn't always see eye to eye with my brother. <laughs> I don't mean any harm, Ross. As uh, Dwidge comes in. So just carrying on with the local cricket team, we've got the Liverpool competition. Um, we've got the uh, Cheshire County League, which uh, Chester Borton Hall, the host ground play in. And then we've got the uh, North Wales Premier competition as well. There are closest competitions. Uh, but there's... Uh, I think there's about 20 Premier Leagues up and down the country. But there's also uh, a number of uh, other leagues within that pyramid as well. Um, I know your boys at Port Sunlight Way now are trying to get into the uh, Cheshire County League part of the structure. And uh, I've had a very successful run with Port Sunlight with uh, numerous promotions over the last four or five years. Yeah, it's a tough uh, cricket structure. It's not easy getting into the top flats, but we've enjoyed it. Um, Lee, have you um, have you ever played cricket in it? Oh, he's well, bowled him. Oh, he's got him. So, Bainbridge gone. Three of two. If I if I was the Indian team now, I'm not sure whether I'd be delighted that we're taking <laughs> wickets or frustrated that we just couldn't break that open partnership because the the middle order is. Uh, it's just starting to show a little bit of fragility here and they're getting a, a little bit more reward. So just uh, wrapping up obviously on the local scene here. Um, cricket, it's a real cricket hotbed up in the, in the north of England. Um, many uh, fantastic overseas players uh, that have come over over the years. I know we had uh, club captain Chris Fleet in talking about Winston Benjamin and uh, Curtly Ambrose, just to name a couple of ex-professionals uh, here at Chester. But uh, that's probably enough about the uh, the local scene for now. I'm sure over the week we'll touch on it a little bit more. Just obviously we've got India and uh, Scotland in, in, in this game at the moment. Wasim Jaffa back on to bowl here. What's the... Uh, the LMS scene like over in India. We watch Jasper coming into his third over. Good start from Jaffa. So, I've been fortunate enough in the last two years to visit India a few times, and as everyone knows, the passion for cricket is incredible. The only place that I've seen come close to it is probably Barbados. Um, everyone there playing cricket wherever they can. Um, We've got LMS leagues in Mumbai, Gagawan, which is just outside New Delhi, Noida. We've got Hyderabad League, Bangalore League, Coimbatore, Chennai, Pune, and hopefully a lot more coming in October. Hold him. So that's the end of Rose. It's a pity because he. Uh, he came in and gave a good little cameo yesterday but I think uh, they're very aware that they've got uh, as one of the retired batsmen now Rory Johnson so 
very selfless cricket from some of these Scottish players here. They're uh, going all out to make sure they can hit a boundary every ball, knowing that they've got some real quality hitters left in, in the hutch. Yeah, from a team point of view, it's a no-lose situation. If he hits that for six or he gets over four, it's a bonus. If he gets out, he's got the retired Johnson to come back. Now, Johnson got to his 50 just before Fraser Watts, so that's why he came, comes back to the crease first. He beat him to the finish line. It looked like Fraser Watts was going to retire first, but Johnson just got one over his senior colleague there. It's elegant start. Just pushed out to deep mid off. That's lovely. That's lovely gapping, but fantastic fielding from the Indians. Twidge again. He's the star fielder for this Indian side. A youngster. He gives everything. So, Wayne, uh, 169 here, 31 off 13 for potentially 200. Do you think Scotland can do it? Oh. Possibly. The last ball, as we know, if you hit it for, for 12, is worth two. I'm still going with 190. I still think this is going to be a 190. Well, as the scoreboard just updates there. So there's only two overs to get 28. No, but they've got Twitch into attack. Twitch, is, he's been economical this whole, whole tournament. He doesn't. He looks innocuous with his right arm off, but he mixes up his pace. And he's very hard to get away in the death. I hope he uh, doesn't let me down here, Dwidge. Oh, look at that bounce. It's a great start from Dwidge. Just another tweet came through from uh, a local uh, Chester player, Dilruk Yakindu. Uh, I can't even say his name. <laughs> and I play with him. Sorry, <laughs> Dil. Um, I know Dil has some. Uh, he played uh, Sri Lanka under 19 in his younger days. And his son Liam uh, managed to meet Marcus North yesterday. It's a fantastic picture on Twitter. Liam's a fine young left-hander, and uh, Marcus uh, had a good chat with him down the nets as well. So, you know, not just these LMS players getting the experience of these marquee players, but all the kids and uh, and uh, people in the local community get a benefit as well. It's just fantastic, Wayne. Now, it really is good to see. It's good to see Chester Border Hall Cricket Club getting behind this event. We're very lucky uh, as an organisation to be having this first ever World Series at such a great club. And uh, coming back to cricket, yeah, Dredge proving again why he's such a good, well that's a great little shot from Johnson, getting down on one knee and just ramping it down to fine leg. Uh, so, Dredge... He's completed his spell. So for those of you who um, are following the game on Facebook, it's also worth having a look at Twitter, Last Man Stands Twitter handle. There's some good tweets there. There's also a lot of other activity from people just watching the game. It's good to see Paul Kearney taking credit for Chris, Chris Geary's knock earlier. It would not surprise me at all if uh, Paul was sat with his uh, headphone in at work, listening to every ball of every game. So I was incorrect earlier. Dwight just still got one more ball in his spell. He's only gone for, for 29 of 3.4. Well bowled. That's good batting. That's good running from Ferguson. He's fired it in, I tell you what. There was no one backing up there. The bowler did really, really well. And he wasn't too... He didn't uh, <laughs> think too, too fondly of the ball being chucked in, but he's got good hands. You can understand why the fielder did that. So who's going to be bowling the last over? Lee, who do you think... Who would you go with you now if you were captain? Well, from the bowlers we've got left available, for me, it'd have to be a marquee player, Wazim Jaffa. Uh, I think you've got to use his experience. You know, 182 for five. There isn't a great deal... Uh, as a bowler um, to gain in this over uh, but obviously you know just someone who's got that little bit bit more experience and they've gone for him there. the captain agrees with you as the, the ball's just been bowled into the wicket by Jaffa it's actually a really good pick up by the fielder and Ferguson will enjoy his knock yet he moves on to nine from seven well supported from Johnson 
Or should it be the other way around? Johnson, 64 from 35. What a great knock from the Scottish development player. Got to be in with a shout of a uh, bus through the day here. I think you'll just want to settle for one, yeah. You'll want to be on strike here, Johnson. Three balls to go. Still looking like 190, but remember the last ball, if you hit it for six, it's 12. So Lee called 200, I call 190. Oh, that's a great hit. <laughs> <laughs> that's another six for Scotland. I'm sure that uh, many people north of the border will be happy with that one. He's just got down on one knee and he's hit that four or five rows back. It's a great shot. He's played both ways. Yeah, he's just worked around. Now he's got license to hit. He's gone leg side. There should be two more. Oh, oh, sent back. Oh, Ferguson fans himself here. Yeah. I think I would have come back anyway. No, and yeah, Johnson's let Ferguson take on the home run ball. This ball, for those of you who don't know, if you hit the last ball for six, it's worth 12. Can Ferguson do it? No. It still should be four. Good finish there from Scotland. Well done to Ferguson. The Scotland will be happy with that. 196 and they're 20. He just shuffled across just before the ball was bowled there and punched the square of the wicket. But Team India have got the opportunity to make amends in the second half here. Chasing 197 with the help of marquee player Wasim Jaffa. Yeah, that, I think India won't feel too unhappy with that. That's probably, obviously they'd like to have chased something below 180, but they've got some firepower in the innings. Um, be interesting to see what number Jaffa bats. Lee, what would you be doing if you were the captain? What number would you bat was him Jaffa in a run chase chasing 200? Uh, one. Number one. Absolutely. There's n n this is a no-brain decision for me. Mm. Um, you're chasing 200. He needs to be getting in, getting retired as quick as possible and uh, being available to come back in at the end and give a license to other players below. Exactly like uh, Rory Johnson did. That's right, Lee. Rory Johnson, one of the star players for Scotland, 71 of 37. So they'll probably be hoping for something similar to that. Well, obviously, you know, we're, we're looking at Watts and Johnson's contributions there. But I think Farid did a fantastic job. 38 off 15 balls in the middle of the innings. Just gave it that injection it really needed. It would have been easy to just coast to 160, 170 after the openers done all the hard work. But, uh, you know, fantastic effort. The bowling figures. Dwidge, the pick of the bowlers again. Four overs, one for 31. Uh, well supported by Wasim Jaffa, who only went for 28 from his four. Just uh, looking across at um, the film crew over there that are just doing a interview with uh, the Singapore camp uh, captain, uh, Manjeet Singh. What, what a couple of days he's had, Wayne. Yeah, uh, it was an unbelievable knock earlier to get Singapore home against South Africa. And uh, I think so far, if we're going to be talking about the player of the tournament, it would be him. Well, for those of you who have been here, there's been some cracking noise over at the other ground. And I'll tell you why. Singapore have just uh, caused the first upset of the tournament, beating uh, one of the favourites, actually, South Africa in day two here yeah what a great game that was largely due to the man to my right here Manpreet Singh who's had an absolute cracker of a game 72 of just 42 balls so brilliant um may talk me through that you managed to hold your nerve at the end there uh yeah first of all it's a really good game so open were like I mean they were bad really well but in the in the first we hold the score was like 140 140 something I knew that that we can chase this score like, so in the batting part also, uh, guys played really well, but Vinita also played really well. So yeah, in the end, I was there only for t two hours, 22 runs. So I knew that if I stayed there, I could have uh, changed the score. So I was placing the g ball in the gaps only. Yeah, very, very good. It was great to watch. I mean, I, I, we certainly learned a lot. And I, I think, um, what, what, did, what was your sort of plan when you first went in? Were you just trying to get yourself in? Uh, yeah, I mean, w when I entered in the uh, match, so I was just uh, looking for single doubles because the uh, the wickets got early, two wickets, I guess, three wickets. 
So I was just getting two doubles, singles, so putting the gaps, uh, I mean, get a boundary also, if I get a, if get a loop ball. Yeah, so in the end, so I was just looking for the runs in the gaps, two single doubles, same here. Really enjoyed your six over extra cover there, I mean, uh, and the straight one. Is that a, is that a particular favourite area for you? Yeah, obviously, I mean, I, I like to play in the covers and, uh, yeah, I mean, straight shots and covers, I really like to play. I was waiting for the balls to come there, so I just played there. Oh, brilliant, mate. We're very happy for you. Nothing like a, a good upset to get things going at, uh, at the tournament. At the moment, we're in the middle of a game here. Scotland have just posted 196, so uh, that's a great game. India really up against it, and uh, we're going to come for the second half of this game, so stay tuned. Okay, we're at the innings break. Obviously, Scotland did fantastically well there to get to 196 in the 20 overs. Um, mainly down to uh, young Rory Johnson, who's a Scottish development player. I've managed to get him in the box with me just for a few moments. I don't think uh, the rest of the Scottish lads Rory noticed that you're here, so I think I've got a few minutes. Well batted there. Thank you very much. Enjoy that. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I also really enjoyable coming to a tournament like this. It's a great setup around here. So have you, have you managed to get here for the whole week? Uh, just Monday to Friday, uh, just club club commitments during the weekend. So, so who do you, you play for at the weekend? Uh, Forfshire Cricket Club up in Dundee. Oh, so, excellent. So what yeah. league do they play in? Uh, they play in the Eastern Premier League, so yeah. Scotland split East and West, so they're in the top of the East. And you've, uh, you're part of the uh, Scotland development setup? Uh, yeah, yeah. So what does that entail? Uh, just training through in Edinburgh and we get a few games against the counties down in England against the Air Performance Academies and uh, probably a series against Ireland at the end of the year as well. You must have been chuffed with that one day win for the senior side against our boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it was a big group of us down watching. Amazing day. Amazing day out there. <laughs> I would have thought the only way that you beat us in any sport may have been football but uh, cricket I didn't see it happening so but uh, look a massive improvement for you boys uh, from yesterday's result, I don't know how much you managed to to get of. Um yeah, no, I managed to watch the live stream. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, the England boys looks look pretty good, pretty high class. So, so is it your uh, first attempt at uh, LMS cricket, or have you played a bit of it up in Scotland? Uh, I've played a little bit of it, just with mates, just during the week. It's great to get a quick hit. So yeah, I was going to say, you know, obviously for a player who's uh, trying to forge the way in cricket, it's great to get any opportunity to have a hit. But you just said they're playing with your mates. I know sometimes when you end up playing rep cricket as a young lad, you end up playing with all different kinds of people. Sometimes it's nice just to get out there with your mates and have a have a bit of a bit of a hit and a bit of banter as well. Yeah, no, it's great just to keep it just to keep it fun. And, 
Uh, I'm just going to come in at you, Four Fisher Cricket Club. Can you tell me a little bit about Four Fisher Cricket Club? Uh, yep, we're off in Dundee. Uh, watch, we've got four teams. Uh, oh, so, so, yeah, big members. Has uh, Ryan Watson been involved in that club? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has. I knew this was coming. Is it you, Wayne? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, Ryan was telling me. Ryan was telling me. Make sure I had a chat to you. Yeah, yeah Ryan's so. a good boy. Former Scotland player. Uh, in LMS, uh, Ryan would be looking to bowl himself in both ends. And when he <laughs> used to captain me at school, he, he used to bowl 20 overs from the one end, regardless if he'd gone for 200 of his 20 overs. <laughs> but Ryan's a good friend of mine and a good good club man. Uh, I'll be putting Lee back on the mark. Sorry to interrupt uh, uh, you two there, fellas. Uh, but uh, I think the uh, the Scotland captain will probably want you back on the field there, uh, Rory, after that exceptional first half as... Uh, Test batsman Wazim Jaffa goes out to uh, try and chase a total down. I thought it was fantastic. Really enjoyed watching you about there today and uh, good luck for the rest of the game. Yeah, cheers. Thanks very much. So it's a completely new opening pair here for India. As mentioned, it's Wazim Jaffa on strike here against Farid. He's also opening the batting. I think it's with um, is it Ara Ara Do? Yeah, so two brothers on the side. Just push down to the door. So this is Meg. Meg's the left-hander. He's very correct player. Not a big hit of the ball. He'll just look to move the ball around. I think that's exactly what Jeff will want. Isn't it amazing, amazing Wayne, how uh, tactics are changing as the tournament progresses uh, with the, the hot weather? We've seen an awful lot of slow bowling today. Yeah, so for Reed, leg spinner turning it into the left handed Meg. I think there could be two here. Fred's frantically chasing it. I think he knows there could be two. That's going to be uh, to no avail as uh, Singh comes in, picks it in, lobs it in. That's exactly what Meg's been brought in to do. As I said earlier, I'm very surprised they, they left him out the first game. Lee, I'm sure you'll agree he's keeping added something compared to the first game. And you can already see he's got a good compact technique. Yeah, he's got a really nice setup there. His weight's just set forward. Again, just worked it into the leg side. He'll come back for two again here, I'm sure. Be interesting to see Wazim Jaffa um, running all these twos. He's, he's been an exceptional test cricket. Uh, obviously, many caps, 31 tests. But he's such a powerful player. I'm not sure on a Saturday in club cricket he has to do as much running as this, Wayne. He has the ability to find the boundary at ease. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's made it there. Yeah, it is. He's, he's made it very clear that there's only one that time. So Meg keeps the strike. It's a good start from Farid. Painbridge into the tech. So this is obviously our third game of the day on the uh, the main pitch. We've already seen uh, England. Uh, quite comfortably get past the UAE in game one. Yeah, England are looking like they're growing in strength. Seem to be getting to, to know each other on and off the field. Well led by Nick Darby Welsh, Blake van der Linde, and then Nick Compton also adding a lot of advice at various intervals of the game. That was followed up by a, a first win of the tournament for Australia, who got past Wales. Wales put up a fantastic fight. Uh, because I, I think they were at least 20 short, to be honest. But um, Ian Martin uh, rallied the troops and uh, used, I think it was five off spinners. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they they got off over the line. Marcus North oh, was... Uh, class from Jeffa there. Just running it down to the vacant third man. I think you're going to see an awful lot of that. He's got fantastic wrists. 
He's, so, he's just caressed. That's the third man, hasn't he? It's a fabulous shot. So Young Mig, this is a great opportunity for him. Batting with the one of the outstanding players in the Indian side. Yep. Pushed away to the offside. Just, we, the, just the one. We spoke about this with Nick Compton yesterday. That that noise off the bat there, is, you know, like a a bullet going out of a gun there, it, you know, just straight down to long off for the single, but timing was impeccable. Bainbridge coming round the wicket here. As he comes in from the city end. A little bit of width. Fizzed it out to Watts in the deep. And that's another single. He's very unlucky that went straight at the fielder because he timed that superbly. Meg's looking good, yeah. He's looking really good. and I can see why you were bigging him up, bigging him up yesterday when he was left out the side. Again, just very controlled here. Good fielding from Johnson there. India not panicking here. They're just trying to get off to a solid start, set the base here. How many would you feel comfortable chasing off the last 10 overs, Wayne? Uh, 11 and over. So I think they want to get to 85, 90 after the first 10 minimum. And give themselves... Also, obviously, a lot will depend on uh, Jaffa here. I think if he's in the hat, that just gives them that extra insurance. But they've got a lot of firepower in their order. So... I don't think they'll be too worried as long as the rate stays below 12. I always think when you're chasing a, a big total, though, it's it's not one of those where you just see how it goes. I think there has to be a plan. I think there has to be a structure to how you go and chase down these sort of scores. You don't, it, that just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen by luck. So I'm pretty sure the Indian side have had a good chat. Fantastic bit of fielding by Ferguson in the deep there. Yeah. It's a tricky one because they obviously want Jaffa to retire, but Meg's not the, the, the player that's going to get them off to a, a lightning start yet. So I would have thought it's going to be Jaffa at some point that's going to decide to up the ante. It's just a, not a matter of when. If it's a matter of when. There we go. Oh, there you go. Right on cue. That was a short arm punch uh, for about 70 metres, about six foot off the floor there, Wayne. That, that is incredible power. We're just going to watch the replay there. Yeah, it's a great shot. Just controlled hitting. Oh. He's just opened his... Uh... And this is what Meg brings to the team. Something that was missing yesterday. Running between the wickets, which is just what Jaffa needs. Jaffa there just sensed that uh, he wasn't quite at the pitch with Fareed and he just adjusted himself, opened... Uh, his body and went inside out over extra there for a couple. Oh, well bowled. Well bowled for it. Very unlucky there. Just getting that one to hold up and a bit of turn. Two more to the total. So Jeff has already seems to be changing his his way of playing. Yep. First two overs just looking at now. It looks like he's He's deciding to put his foot down, yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's got a chance. Oh, shit! That is <laughs> unbelievable. unbelievable fielding. <laughs> From Johnson. We just had him in the commentary box. That could be, I don't know, we, we've got an award for the, the play of the day. That's going to be right up there from Johnson. So we're just going to watch this back. This is absolutely incredible. He's caught it. He's, he's got it out of his hands. He saved the six. Unbelievable. And that will make it onto Twitter later. And I know uh, a man of his age, uh, Rory's going to have a few of his mates retweeting that one for us because that was absolutely fantastic cricket in the deep. You can see that he's played his cricket with Ryan Watson. That's exactly what Ryan Watson would have done out there. Except Ryan wouldn't have caught the ball and would have gone for six and Ryan would have ended up on his bum. I don't know about the Scottish cricket team, I reckon the Scottish football team may need a keeper because they're completely hopeless. But uh, he was absolutely brilliant there. Meg's pushed it out to extra cover. Is Jaffa going to go for two? It's good fielding from Watts. So they've got their two star batsmen out on the offside for the left-hander. It's just an 
increasing intensity from Scotland as well with the inclusion of Johnson and Watch, yeah. Oh, that is uh, <laughs> a, great shot. a fantastic shot. So uh, he's just uh, been prevented a six by a magical piece of fielding by Rory Johnson, literally two balls earlier, and then he's obviously thought there's a bit of a risk coming down the ground, so he's, he's literally just opened the face and let the ball roll off it, where a first or second slip would be, and it's just rolled away down towards the Ron Fleet end of the ground here at Chester. Is there a bit of a wind developing yet? It feels like there's a bit of a wind blowing from the commentary box towards the pitch. Seems to be going across from uh, left to right from our commentary position here. I think that's what made uh, Rory Johnson's piece of fielding even better there because I think the wind was just taking it away from him there. But hopefully we'll get another look at that at the end of the over. That was just fantastic work. I think we can need another two looks at that. I think all the viewers would like to see that again. No one's going to stop that. That's <laughs> such a good shot. What a fabulous shot this is. What's fantastic about seeing these marquee players, Wayne, is they all do it in their own way. Yeah. But it's all, you know, it's just so controlled that we've Make seen. Make it look easy. Yeah, we've seen Jaffa so far. He's played a couple of shots straight down the ground, a couple of late, you know, cuts. We watched North just manipulate the ball all over the place as he does it again. <laughs> And then we saw Nick Compton play quite classical cricket shots, pick up a couple into the leg side. It's just been absolutely fantastic. And we've still got James Franklin to come later in the day, which I arguably think is, is the big game of the day. Yeah, well, Franklin versus Razak. Everyone's looking forward to seeing those two go head to head. But uh, can Jaffa repeat it? Two straight down the ground. Where's he going to go now? Just try to go, I think. I think he was trying to heave that over mid-wicket. But good comeback from Bainbridge. Not easy bowling against a former international player. But Bainbridge held his nerve there. Well, this is a really good start from India. It's going to make for a really exciting game, this. Jaffa 35 at the end of the fourth over. We're just going to watch this bit of fielding again. So he's caught it a good foot or so inside the boundary. And the, uh, the power of the shot is taking him backwards and he's uh, released the ball after catching it. Just fabulous stuff. There we go again. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Different level stuff there. Looks like a good all-round fielder. Talking about marquee players, Scotland have brought on... Uh, Fraser Watts. He plays at the Carlton Cricket Club in Edinburgh. Oh, great shot from Meg. Great, oh, this is great cricket all around. This has been a really good standard, this first four or five overs from both sides. Yeah, and both sides struggled yesterday. It just shows that, including two new players in both sides it just made a massive difference push hard Meg's going to go hard yeah can Meg turn for two again Meg showing something different here that wasn't on display yesterday I think Meg's cementing his place in this side for the rest of this tournament well this is a good battle between Jeff and Watts here he's Watts played 36 uh, ODIs and 11 T20s uh, for Scotland um, Lee I'm going to be leaving the, the commentary box at the end of this over um, and James Franklin will be playing in the next game will be uh, taking over from me as Watts comes in again a little wide down the leg side just a little bit of pressure being put on by the Indian batsman here yeah so I think Jeff will be looking to to get to his 50 and retire give him Give the team confidence knowing that Jaffa is in the hat. Insurance policy for them all to go hard. I'll be honest with you, Wayne. I think if India have got any chance of chasing this total down, I think uh, Jaffa has to retire. So just so you know that you've got that, that extra license to, to go at it later in the innings. Yeah, agreed. Uh, they've got a few other hitters, but I think it's just under pressure. Jaffa could be the difference at the end. But Lee, I'll be uh, joining you later on again. And uh, I'll... Uh, 
keep you posted on pitch two as well. So I've been joined in the box by uh, New Zealand legend here, James Franklin. Good afternoon, James. Good afternoon, Lee. How are you, mate? Very, very good. I don't know if you've uh, managed to catch much of the action online. Um, it's been a fantastic day of cricket here, and I know that uh, you're just hours away from uh, playing for your country uh, in this World Series. Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous about it. Well, uh, I think uh, quite a few of the marquee players have been quite nervous. Um, obviously, uh, Marcus North... Uh, Nick Compton, and we've got Wazim Jaffa here, and Abdul Razak uh, played yesterday as well. You guys have got a really important job to do. <laughs> yeah, look, obviously it's fantastic that, that you know these sorts of players are coming and being involved in this tournament. Um, you know, to be honest, it's the first time I've I've seen this format of the game being played, so I'm excited about being part of it. Just to interrupt you, Ferguson bowls uh, towards uh, Jaffa again. He's just punched it out towards the offside. Singh's picked up cleanly, and that's two more to the score. Uh, Nick Compton made a fantastic uh, remark at the opening ceremony uh, where he said that uh, I'm here to be the professional but I'm here as an amateur learning to be a professional because he'd never played, uh, he'd, he'd literally played the odd game of it beforehand so that is absolutely massive from Wazim Jaffa as he hits it into the housing estate yet again this has been an absolute masterclass from the Indian legend and he's putting his country in a very strong position here against the Scottish side, chasing 196. Sorry to interrupt you there, James. I get very excited when we see the ball flying into that housing estate. Um, so how much do you know about LMS? Have you been doing your homework or are you you're just taking it in at the moment and, and uh, going to rely on some of your teammates to help you along your way in this first game? <laughs> I, uh, I just got a brief overview of, of the rules about 10 minutes ago, so uh, I'm intrigued watching this match now between Scotland and India just to find out a few of the little nuances of, of this game. Um, the big one is obviously when the ball goes up and it looks like you get caught and you're a non-striker <laughs> not to get caught down at the striker's end. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of that and, and also as well, you know, I know you've played cricket all around the world in, in all the top competitions, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure not even you've hit a 12. Where can you do that? Right, here we go. So the last ball, the last ball of the innings, uh, whoever's on strike can hit a 12. Uh, and uh, as we're talking, Wazim Jaffer has uh, just retired for his 50 there as the Pakistan team comes past. Very much looking forward to watching them later on. I think, I think that's what who we've got New Zealand against Pakistan. Yeah, they're really good, you know. Yeah, well, I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. Anyway, a massive applause. The Indian team all stood to a man waiting for him to come off. A gentle raise of the hand from Wasim Jaffa as he comes off with 50 retired and uh, 62 uh, for none off five overs. So they're ahead of the run rate as well. Sorry, there's an awful lot going on in this commentary box at the moment. There's, you've. Uh, You've missed a bit of a shock earlier in the day. Singapore have turned over uh, South Africa. Yeah, I heard, and I, I also hear that South Africa are one of the favourites in this tournament. It's probably the place in the world that has the strongest league. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, and uh, you know, I think South Africa have come come over with an outstanding attitude and and look a very professional outfit. But Singapore uh, played to their absolute potential. Uh, South Africa maybe drop a little bit below the best and, and that can happen on, on any given day so I must admit I'm a, a great fan of this when uh, I know Kyron Pollard and Shiv Chanderpaul like to use the bail sometimes it's a bit of a novelty I know the groundsman isn't very keen on this <laughs> yeah but to come back to your point about what Nick Compton said in terms of being you know a novice or an amateur in this format very much so I mean I feel like a, I'm, I'm a rookie I've never played this game so it's it's my debut today and I'm excited about being part of this the beauty of it is you do you do tend to pick the rules up relatively quickly at the, I, and, and the great thing is it, at six aside sometimes it's very crash and bash but there's definitely different nuances to this and there's uh, roles for people who are more nudger and nerdlers and 
it's it's learning you know learning that you get as a batsman you get all the wides put on your score which is quite nice yeah, i basically got told as well by some of the fellow my fellow kiwi teammates that basically just deal in even numbers when you're batting can't go wrong <laughs> that's very fair to be it's uh it's a good way to go um i bet you've never had the umpire scoring at the same time as his umpiring no that's a new one as well so they're there with the lms app so uh you can always check that's a fantastic start from nada and he goes to five from two so what, what what's a good score in lms well, obviously, all around the world, this is played, and the play is sometimes played on synthetics or it's played on grass. Uh, here at the Chester Bourne Hall Cricket Club, uh, this is uh, absolute batsman's paradise. Uh, I'm pretty sure if there was ever a problem with a, a plane, they could probably land something on here. The batters love it here, and uh, many a bowler has come and gone. So uh, we've been saying uh, for the last day and a half that 180 is a par score, um, and... I think anywhere around there. The, the wicket is, is just offering a little bit for the spinners, but the outfield is, as just shown there, absolutely rapid. And uh, if it gets through the infield uh, nine times out of ten, it's racing away to the boundary. Yeah, well, it certainly looks as though India trying to chase down pretty much on 200. Um, they're going about it quite easily at the moment. So... I think you're absolutely bang on with your comments here that it, it looks as though it's a pretty good wicket to bat on. Yeah, ma ma massively so. But uh, both these sides are on the back of uh, relatively yeah. heavy defeats yesterday. India took on Pakistan in a, a game that was viewed by over 290,000 people around the world. Wow, that's so outstanding. It is ex outstanding. And, you know, uh, so that was really exciting for the LMS franchise. Um, but uh, India were just a little bit below par and uh, the team that you're playing later, Pakistan, looked like a very, very strong outfit, a well-drilled unit. So that'll be an excellent contest because I know you, your New Zealand boys came over the UAE in a, a very, very high-scoring game on pitch two. And let's talk about my New Zealand team. Who's caught your eye so far? Well, this is the hard thing for me because uh, obviously I, I, I've been covering pitch one with the live stream. Uh, it was uh, your boys' turn to not be on live stream yesterday. They're going to be on live stream for the rest of the week. Uh, it's hard not to mention, I know one of your boys scored 91 off 29 balls. Um, and I, I think he, he got some free kit for that as well, so that's always a bonus, isn't it? You know, Not, not that I'm uh, one to moan, but free is free, and uh, I'll use pretty much anything if it's given to me. So, But uh, no, from what I've heard, New Zealand a very, very strong outfit. Um, I know speaking to Ross uh, Cable before he was uh, full of enthusiasm for the New Zealand side and uh, I think they're excited to get you on board and, and uh, see what you can bring to the party see if you can add to that you know that winning run also just noticed that you bowl from one end for a period of time yeah well, basically in LMS you're going to be bowling all your overs in the first 10 overs of the innings at this end and then at halfway we swi switch around the five ball overs. Um, all of this is designed to ensure that you know when people come to a game of cricket, it's uh, it's moving as quick as possible. It's, it just sounds to me as though the England cricket board might have been a bit sneaky and tried to grab a bit of this concept into their new concept that they're trying to bring on board. Yeah, the hundred ball tournament. Um, look, I, th I think uh, the England cricket board uh, are trying to create something there that obviously they're looking for something new I just think if they followed the, the basic structure of all the other franchise tournaments all around the world where you put it into a block you get your top overseas guys there all the time and you create that excitement but you know we have got a lot of counties in this country uh, and obviously all the counties want their little slice of the pie but it does you know when it comes to T20 it does then slightly dilute the standard of uh, players in in you know obviously all first class players are very good cricketers but you know to have say 10 teams linked to the cities with two or three overseas players similar to the big bash and and the ipl i think uh, we couldn't go too far wrong really i don't know what your thoughts are oh, i'm with you i'm 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 a big fan of the t20 franchise system around the world um <coughs> oh, sorry just to interrupt you there was an earlier run out there kartik uh Tried to push two, but uh, there's that man again, uh, Rory 
Johnson, I don't know if you saw his bit of fielding out here. It was unbelievably, he took a catch where it was going for six and then threw it back into play. Diving backwards on the back of 70 off 37 balls. So he's uh, he's had a good day so far. Sounds like a proper cricketer. Yeah, 17-year-old uh, Scottish Development International. So, you know, we've managed to get him down to this tournament. So great exposure for him. Sorry, just going back to your point about T20. <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, ECB have obviously tried to come up with a a new way of going about it and you know as I said to you before it yeah, seems as though they might have taken a few well, bits and pieces on. from LMS and trying to incorporate in this new 100 ball format that they're trying to break through with their franchise cricket in a couple of years but you know I'm, I'm a big fan of the tried and trusted format of T20. So you've been extremely lucky uh, James to go and play uh, uh, and we've got a run out here and that's uh, the opener Meg. That was a fabulous bit of fielding from Farid in the outfield there and taking him by Watts. I think that is exactly what Scotland needed here. You can see that all the boys have came in. They knew that was a big wicket. The game maybe just getting away from them fractionally within your head of the run rate, but interesting uh, way of uh, taking the stumps there by Watts. Just watch this back again. <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter how. <laughs> He's got the wicket. He's got the wicket that Scotland needed. Um, a nice piece of work in the outfield, and yeah, probably not the most traditional way of taking the bales off for a run out, but he got the job done. Uh, I'm sure some of our Indian fans on Facebook Live have heard this before, but coming in at number four for India is Kohli, and this is his cousin Rao. Hopefully. Uh, Cousin Virat is watching this somewhere, licking his uh, wounds after the defeat of England in the Test match. Feel free to pop down, uh, Virat. We've got a, a five-over stint on commentary for you here. But uh, yeah, you've uh, been very lucky playing all over the world. So uh, just to give uh, some of the viewers an insight, where where have you been and uh, some of the interesting uh, leagues and places that you've been to? As another wicket falls here. <laughs> Watts is really making the difference here. Watts is the franchise player for Scotland. On the back of 36 ODIs, his experience is really showing here. And the, uh, the Indian batting order, Nada, has gone. And uh, si 16 of 10 balls. He really was uh, very committed to that shot there. That is unbelievable glove work. Well done, uh, Joe Rose there. I know that uh, in the LMS standings, a stumping's uh, worth a couple of points as well, so he'll be happy with that. And the rankings, that's another thing for you to learn, James. You know, at the moment, obviously, being a novice to this game, you, your ranking points aren't quite what they are, so uh, you'll be taking some of the uh, the pointers off the guys, but uh, I'm sure they'll accept your international CV as a point of reference. Well, I think my points are very much at the bottom as, as far as they could possibly down, be down, so... Um, hopefully I'll be able to gather a few points later on this evening and get my account underway for LMS. I've tried to ask you three times now we're all over <laughs> the world, you played T20 cricket, so just before Watts <laughs> runs into bowl, let's see if we can get one or two of the countries in. Well, obviously England. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. he's, he's, he, I'm not going to ask you that question again because I think I'm going to get some uh, derogatory comments off the Indian fans because it seems extremely unlucky for, for India. As day goes, first ball. And that's 82 for three, and we're in a, a real collapse here for India. They looked very, very comfortable, and uh, almost as comfortable as that ca catch for Watts, but uh, the franchise player doing his job here, and he's making a massive difference. Yeah, huge over there, getting three wickets already in it, run out, and a couple of... Great pieces of bowling there from Watts. Uh, outstanding work. So Scotland are right back in this game now. Just what they needed. Um, and it looks as though it could be a tricky chase now for India. Well, this is uh, Vahab, um, who got 50 yesterday. Um, he batted extremely well. And I'll be honest here, it was, there was no Wasim Jaffe yesterday. India struggled. And um, this is a key partnership now. Obviously, they have got Jaffa to come back in but they're going to have to get him a little bit closer to the total. I think uh, expecting him to get another 100 runs on his own maybe asking a little bit too much. 
Yeah, they might. I mean, again, being very new to this, there's obviously only, what, six fielders. So there's plenty of gaps in the outfield. They probably just want to get themselves in for a couple of overs. They've still got plenty of time. Their run rate's still well and truly on course to, to get this total. So establish a bit of a partnership and then try and make hay later on in this innings. Well, obviously, they, make the most, they made the most of the power play the first four overs, uh, which allows you to put... Uh, Four fielders either side um, for those first four overs. You're also allowed two power play overs in the final two overs as well. Um, so just in case you're bowling in the power play and you think that you've got that control to bowl one side. But uh, it's absolutely brutal. A couple of the sides, have, it's been quite good seeing a couple of the sides attack. We've seen the odd slip. Well, put in for a couple of balls, more for show, I think. And then, But this is Asad Amir. Nice to see a bit of seam. He was very unlucky early on. He was run out without facing. He got a bit of a yes, no, sorry from Singh. And then Singh got run out as well the next ball. So those two are stewing together in the rooms. As Assad comes in again, steaming in from the city road end here of the Borton Hall Cricket Club. And just nudged into the gap of point there. Very good fielder, Rory Johnson. They know he is as well. And they've just uh, laid off and took the single. It is interesting that, you know, we haven't actually seen, well, since I've been at the ground for an hour or so, I haven't really seen too much seam bowling. So definitely looks as though spin is the way to go today on this pitch. You might even see a couple of overs of spin from me today. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to see a few overs of seam from the uh, the Pakistani boys uh, because they open up with a very, very impressive left arm seamer uh, called Shabazz Khan, who... Uh, Ran through the Indian top order yesterday with a selection of in swingers and uh, away swingers, and came back for a nice little second spell with a bit of reverse as well. Not like a Pakistani team to come up with a, a quality left arm seamer. Brilliant! Sounds like fun. I can't wait. <laughs> no, so obviously uh, playing in uh, Middlesex at the moment yeah I've been there for the last three or four seasons moved over with my family I've got an Irish passport so I can play and uh, work in in the UK as a local player so back into my career it was a nice opportunity to come over and play at Lords um, and obviously play for Middlesex as well so we've had a, a disappointing year this year so far but we're hopefully well, we're hopeful that we can rectify things in the last couple of months of the season. It'd be remiss of me not to mention uh, the game the other night. Um, obviously, uh, Scotland are trying to defend 196 in 20 overs. Uh, it appears you boys uh, were on the wrong end of uh, Aaron Finch and Jason Roy. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. We played against Surrey at the Oval, the big London derby, uh, packed house. We batted first, we got 220 on the board and... Jason Roy and Aaron Finch made pretty easy work of it. They, sorry, got their one down with about four overs to go. It was simply some of the best T20 batting I've ever witnessed, not only live but also on, on TV, the games that I've watched in the years gone by. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately we were on the wrong end of a, a, a powerful batting display by those two players, Aaron Finch and Jason Roy. Sometimes you get a little bit of a hunch at half-time that it's an exceptional wicket. Uh, when you've put 220 on the board, I know in some club cricket, Circles, if you get over 200 and T20, you can basically put your feet up and some of the seamers think, well, uh, I'll have a night off tonight and some of the medium paces have a little bit of a trundle. But did you boys know that you were definitely in the battle at halfway or did that, that come as a, a bit of a surprise how easily they chased that down? Oh, I, I think with the way that they chased it down came as a surprise, but we never thought we had won the game at half time. I think we're seeing more and more in high-level T20 cricket and even one-day cricket now, we're seeing high scores being chased down now so um, nothing's safe until that last ball is bowled. OK, we're going to change ends now and uh, Fraser Watts continues. So he's coming from the Ron Fleet end now for this second 10 as uh, Captain Coley just punches the ball down to long off for a single. I think there's a little bit of rebuilding work to be done here for the Indian batting lineup. Uh, they've left themselves, well, just over 100, about 108 to get. Uh, in these final 10 overs now I don't think uh, 10 and over in any uh, one day format now for a period of time is overly daunting but what sort of things do you think they should maybe be looking at you know, in the next few overs to do to make sure that they're in a position at the end to have a dip at the total well exactly that, just trying to hit the gaps because of the limited amount of fielders that you have 
you've got quite big gaps to hit into. We've got a fast outfield, as you mentioned, an over or two ago. So mainly you probably just try and keep the ball on the ground for a period of time, hit the gaps hard, hopefully get twos and fours and slowly build that partnership. Keep, keep the run rate within reach because you don't want it to get up to 14s and 15s. That's when it starts to become quite difficult. So if they can keep it around 10, maybe just over for as long as they can, that keeps them more and more in the game, as long as they don't lose wickets, obviously. What, at, what, at what point um, in, on, a, on a chase like that do you see the run rate being... Oh, isn't that a lovely moment there? I don't know where uh, the camera's caught that. There's a, a junior game uh, that started just this afternoon on the backfield. And uh, their ball rolled onto our pitch there, and the, the pink ball rolled towards uh, them. And uh, we ended up with the wrong balls on the wrong pitches there. And uh, Fraser Watts just had a, a game of catch with the young lad at fine leg there, trying to work out which ball it was. So I'm sure that young man will love that because uh, I can see all the kids playing in that game on the back pitch, obviously thoroughly enjoying their game of cricket today. But they've got half an eye on uh, this World Series on pitch one. and. I saw them here earlier on enjoying uh, Manpreet Singh's uh, match-winning knock for Singapore against South Africa. So, sorry to just go off on yet another tangent. You'll work this out quite quickly. Uh, it's all good. So, yeah, if, as long as they keep that run rate around about 10 or 11, and then, you know, if you've still got wickets in hand and there's three or four overs to go, then that's very, very attainable. So, it's really important that they don't try and go too hard too early here there's still a lot of time to bat here there's still nine more overs well uh what i'm going to do james i'm going to uh, cut you off there as some of your uh, teammates uh, come past uh, it's been a pleasure speaking to you and uh hopefully later in the week i'll catch you again in the box i'm sure we will thanks him and i'm looking forward to getting out there and getting stuck in this evening uh, good luck mate so while we have a change in the box uh it looks like we've got uh, Amir Assad, as uh, I welcome uh, Bjorn Biggs, Briggs, I get this wrong every time, it's only a five letter word, sorry Bjorn. Another long day, Lee. <laughs> Trying my best here. Not to worry. Well that was a fantastic insight from James Franklin, not that I don't enjoy Wayne Greaves' company, LMS uh, founder, but it's always nice to uh, just have a different voice and an international test cricketer, is always quite nice to listen to. Always well, good to hear someone with his experience, his views on the game. Singh just taps it out to uh, backward point there for another single. So it's quite interestingly poised here. You just know that uh, Wazim Jaffa's in the shed. That was a fantastic 50 uh, in his LMS debut. Um, he, can, he can hit a ball, huh? I mean, that was amazing. I think. Uh, could be one of the, the ambassadors to watch in this LMS World Series. Well, uh, Abdul Razak hit an absolute monster six uh, just onto the Filkins Road yesterday. And then uh, Wazim Jaffa has uh, hit it almost uh, the identical length, playing a completely different shot. He just caressed it off the middle of the bat. Still not the biggest six I've seen, though. That was Ziad Abbas, and that was in today's game against Wales. He hit the ball about five houses back here into the housing estate as the ball goes down towards Bainbridge picked up cleanly and into Rose Ziad's a good striker of the ball and certainly puts the effort in So Amir comes in again. He's been very economical so far. Eight runs off his 1.4 overs. Coley just give him a bit of a fake there as he stepped outside the line and jumped back inside. But he's going to come back for another two. Vahab gets back. He may be looking for a third here, but well backed up by uh, Rory Johnson, who's been very, very impressive so far. What did you make of his innings, uh, Bjorn? That was a classy knock and... Um I think the, the, the Scottish batting team did exceptionally well to put on 196. Um, they're going to be happy with that. They, they think they can defend this total. And three wickets down, they'll be happy at the moment. They're happy of the two teams, that's for sure, I think. Yeah, I think uh, there was a point where the Indian team uh, probably uh, started to believe that they were well ahead of the, the game. Uh, then obviously losing those three very quick wickets. Just as we look at the... Um, LMS 
Scotland bowling figures. Uh, Fraser Watts is bowled out at the moment and he's uh, four overs, two for 25. That was a fantastic bit of bowling. And then, uh, yeah, not, none of the bowlers have really had too much tap. Assad Amir obviously just going at five and over. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in these final eight overs. Did you manage to catch much of the uh, Singapore versus South Africa game, Bjorn? Um, I watched the uh, end of it. It was a really exciting game. It's really, I think, been the game of the tournament so far. It's, uh, Definitely so. And obviously you sat here with your South Africa jersey on. Uh, I think it'd be rude of me not to maybe call in a, a member of the Singapore team. Uh, my good friend Canal uh, from uh, yesterday, he watched uh, his boys, obviously. It's a famous victory for Singapore. And uh, speak about my uh, my favourite player in cricket, uh, Manpreet Singh. So I'll I'll get I'll give you five overs and I'll, I'll come back to uh, finish this game off. Thanks, Lee. Uh, that was an amazing win for Singapore. They're going to be really happy with it. And um, I know one of the questions that um, Kunal wanted to ask the players. You know, we've we've come to the World Series, and the next step is um, ICC World Cup, and uh, with talent like Manpreet Singh, um, I hope that's that's on the cards in the near future. You know, what a what a young player, what a star. Yeah, good evening, Bjorn. Yeah, uh, fantastic. I mean, I'm quite impressed uh, with him the way he played uh, so far in the last two games. Yeah. Scored a 50 up front, then went back to the hut, put his feet up for a bit, and the wicket started to tumble. He had to be the last man stands, and he took the team home. Yeah, of course, I mean, uh, everyone was bis a bit tensed uh, in the pavilion that time, like what will happen to the game, seven balls, uh, 22 runs required, I mean, uh, and uh, they had, uh, South Africans, uh, you know, they had a good bowling attack, um, uh, you, uh, it's not so easy to hit, uh, you know. No, he made it look easy though, um, <laughs> he got very good control of where he's going to hit the ball, and oh, there's the wicket, and that's the end of, of Kohli, um, didn't... Quite picked the gap there. Not sure that was the right shot at this stage of the game. There's still eight overs to go. It's unfortunate for the Indian side. But yeah, yeah back to Manpreet Singh. I think um, really picked the right balls to go after. And he wasn't just slogging. He was really timing the ball. And when it was there to hit, he hit it. And the others, he played it correctly on the ground and ran hard. Yeah, of course, uh, he's a uh, uh, technically sound player and uh, his favourite areas, especially in the covers and uh, mid of which uh, he targeted. And um, uh, uh, they bowled well actually as well. Uh, they bowled with the plan, good length ball uh, uh, to the off stump. But that was his favourite area, as I said. Yeah. Does um, Manpreet Singh have any... Uh, where is he from originally? Where is folks from? Is he from Indian descent? Uh, yeah, he originated from Punjab, uh, 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 city of Bhatinda. Okay. Yeah. So he could qualify to play for India at the next uh, World Series because they could certainly use a batsman like him. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, does that make you a bit worried? They might yeah, approach him. Of course. <laughs> a lot of work here for the Indians against a, a really gutsy Scottish team. Yeah, they are struggling at the moment. It's a shot into the covers for one. They're going to look for two. Oh, there's a misfield and a boundary. Yep, that's gone for four. Welcome boundary for India. Takes them to 105. I don't think there's any last man stands in uh, Punjab at the moment, Kunal. Yeah, there's no LMS in Punjab so currently. If, if um, there are any... Uh, fans out there that like to see some LMS in their um, backyard in Punjab, India, just log on to our website lastmanstands.com forward slash franchise and maybe you'll be the guy to, to set up the franchise in, in Punjab, India. A lot of regions still available in India. Of course there is a lot of opportunities uh, for LMS in uh, Punjab, a lot of cricketers are there. Even in uh, Singapore, we have three players from uh, Punjab currently. Of course, you'd like to see uh, India go from strength to strength so that you can hang on to the, the stars such as Manpreet <laughs> Singh because we definitely need a few more regions going in India because we know they're a powerhouse 
Cricketing Nation. Yep. Is Manpreet Singh, is he in any academies at Singapore? Uh, he currently uh, just qualified a uh, few months ago for the national team. Uh, he plays for Singapore national team as well. Uh, he's not training in under any academy, he just trained with the national team. Okay, that's fantastic for the young man. When's the national team's next tournament? Uh, they have... Um, Mixed up, oh, yeah, it's going to be a run out. Oh, there was a chance. Chance of a run out yeah. there. Through to the wrong end. So for Singapore, uh, upcoming um, national event will be in September, October. That is the Asia Cup qualifier. In Mal uh, To be held in Malaysia. Malaysia, which teams are competing in that? There will be definitely Malaysia, uh, Singapore and uh, UAE as well. Okay. Yeah, so they, these are the major teams. There uh, there could be a couple of more teams coming in. Right. Yeah. It's a big swing and a miss there. Hundred and eleven for four. A lot of batting required from this point. Uh, uh, this point of time, if they want to win the game, almost fourteen runs and over. Fourteen runs and overs is a tough task, yeah, especially on this big field on uh, on oval two where you guys were. It, it's definitely doable, but here it's a uh, it's a lot harder. Yeah, of course. This I mean, uh, one nine seven on this ground, amazing. It's a high score. On the oval two, I think uh, 180, 190 is the par score, what I personally feel. On this ground, I feel if uh, you score 160, 170 is a good total as well. I think the outfield so, so quick that you need to be scoring 175, 180 against the good batting lineup. Yeah, of course, uh, against the good batting lineup, then uh, more runs are required. And I mean, the outfield is uh, uh, quite fast. There's no rain at the moment, so quite dry. And the very small grass, they cut a lot, so the ball is traveling quite fast. Once you miss the ball, there's no opportunity. You can, uh, you know, pick up the ball. Obviously, cricket's a funny game. And uh, <laughs> on the smaller field, uh, I mean, it got quite close there, just chasing the 142 to win. Yeah. Oh. the covers. That's going to be a boundary. Is he going to save it? Great fielding there. Uh, that's a boundary. Oh. Fantastic fielding in there in the outfield. That's Watts again in the action. No signal from the umpire. So that means. Let's have another look at it. Touch and go there. No replays in this LMS World Series. Stop in now. And that'll be a boundary. This is some electricity being used today, isn't it? Score moves to 119. Anything can happen in cricket, but uh, this game, uh, they need some miracle if they want to score 28 balls, 78 runs. A lot required from the batsman, going at 7.98 and as you say, required 12.8 and over, 98 from 38 balls. Good intent there, that'll be a boundary, that's what they need, straight down the ground. I think they need to do on every ball uh, this kind of stuff, they need to really go for everything but uh, because not so many overs are left now, after this fi only 5 overs have left. Oh, oh well. put it down. He got a fingertip to that, I think. But good effort by the wicket keeper. Great effort. We were just uh, discussing about Punjab. It seems like there's one more Punjabi in the Scotland side. Okay. Yeah. So. Sing. <laughs> it seems like the. Um, the Indians and the South Africans have an expat in just about. Every one of the teams taking part in this tournament, <laughs> yeah. you know. Camera is also focusing on Singh. <laughs> and which other parts of um, 
India do you think uh, LMS would thrive in? I think definitely like Punjab they have so many cities like Chandigarh the major city right um, and then uh, they have uh, Bhatinda, Patiala okay so th there are three major cities a lot of talents out there as well yeah and then Amritsar so four cities definitely uh, can go into and then there are so many other states uh, I mean if uh, if you uh, as, uh, go to Maharashtra as well to the west side of India right yeah there are so many states like Nasik Pune I think uh, they have already started Right, correct, yes. We've got um, six teams in the Pune League and I think one of the players is from Pune in this Indian side. And then Dweej, I think, is from the Mumbai side. He's on the, see, he's on strike now. No, he's, it's, it's sing on strike. Oh, he's gone oh. big. He hasn't got a hold of that. Be a difficult catch. Oh, dropped. Difficult chance. Difficult chance. He moved well to get under it and then seemed to just not keep his eye on the ball. There was a uh, top edge. Uh, didn't, uh, he didn't middle the ball. We had our Indian National Championships in the... The city of Goa, Kunal. Have you been to the, to the coast of Goa? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, holiday destination. So, oh, that's a boundary. Great shot there. Yeah. I've been to Goa quite a few times. I think more than three, four times. It's a nice city. So that, that'll be the host city again for the 2019 Indian National Champs. And um, your team's looking to represent LMS India you've got to get down to the Indian national champs and throw your your hat into the ring and a lot of these players have been selected from the national championships oh beaten a oh, ball there did you watch some of the highlights of the Indian national champs where it was the first time we've had a tie in the game and then a tie in the the ball yeah the ball yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, I'm aware about that game and uh, that was uh, like fantastic facility as well uh, there. I mean, uh, any team would uh, love to play in Goa if uh, you're holding any national championship in Goa because it's, that's good holiday destination as well. A ball tidy keeping there by Rose. And the stamps just takes off the one, the one bail, much like <laughs> myself in my dreams. Really, really good keeping there. Well bold. 68 runs from 20 balls now. It's still possible. Uh, they need uh, some stormy batting. They need Manpreet Singh here, you know. <laughs> I think it, I mean, it all is going back to Manpreet Singh. Um, I think uh, if there are any Indian selectors, uh, I mean, they might pinch him for one of the IPL teams. you think he's got a chance of that? Yeah, of course, he has a bright future. He's a young lad, I mean, 23 year old. So he has a bright future. I mean, if he keeps uh, performing, anything could happen. And uh, uh, the opportunities in IPL being created for, you know, uh, last time, uh, long time ago, if you can't play under 19, that would be very difficult for the players. It'll be wide. I agree. And uh, at the opening night at the dinner gala, Marcus North spoke about the difference between being professional and just the really talented players often comes down to mental strength. Yeah, of course. Oh, that is another white. No, what's got the need right now? But back to Manpreet Singh. He looks like a player who's got that mental strength to take him to the next level. Yeah, of course, and it's uh, it's not so easy, you know. Uh, he's working. Uh, he's not just playing cricket. Uh, he, they, it's very uh, difficult life for them, uh, like working. Uh, from morning to night and then uh, train a couple of hours uh, like right. uh, they work like 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. then they go for uh, national training or so he's he's uh, I mean he's a he's an amateur cricketer at the moment he's not yeah. paid to play cricket which yeah. makes it that much tougher yep that's why they need to work for their living great shot there that'll be a boundary one bounce two bounce into the rope 60 runs off eight 56 from 17 now and what work does he do uh, he's uh, into marketing uh, for one of the construction companies in Singapore. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well played again. That's very good cricket. That's what India need, more of that. Doesn't need to go aerial, just picks the gap twice in a row there. That's two boundaries, 52 from 16. That's the require. I mean, it's not about just winning and losing. That sport, uh, you know, teaches everyone, like, never die attitude. They're still trying hard, you know. It's good to see. It's that mental toughness yeah, and that grit, that will to win. That's a better delivery. Good flight. A little bit of turn there. Singh went for another big one and uh, just lifted his head slightly. It's not so easy to hit like spinner if they uh, ball outside the off-stump to hit against the turn in the leg side. Needed to wait for that a bit more, maybe rock back yeah. a bit. Yeah. Just looking at the voters here. And looks oh. like we're going to have a change of bowler. Vaseem Jafar is still retired, but not, uh, not so much of um, cricket left now, only three overs left. It's a pity. Um, that he hasn't come in, hasn't had the opportunity to come in and finish off the innings like Manpreet did. But these guys are still giving it a full go here. And um, I'm sure we're going to see some shots in these last couple of overs. That's That's right. Definitely a wide there. So uh, Wasim Jafar arrived this morning. Yes, Wazim Jaffa arrived and uh, seems like another another wide and another run. So that means four runs on this ball. That was a second wide. Much needed for the Indians. Bainbridge bowling. That's going to be another boundary. Good shot by Singh. Just a four. He's going to retire soon. 44 from 26 deliveries. It's been a good inning so far. It's seven fours in that, in that inning so far. Strike rate of 169. He's given it all for his team. And another one into the gap. Going to run hard. There's two here at least. Maybe three if they run a bit harder. Settle for two. Good throw from the deep. They really need to uh, try harder and harder. Required run rate almost 17 plus. Run hard there, guys. Got to put, I'd like to see them run a bit harder between the wickets because if there is a fumble, then there's an opportunity for a second run. And at this stage, yeah. they, they need every run that they can get just to, so that they give themselves a chance when it comes down to the last over. 20, 22 runs off the last over with a home run. Yeah. It's, it's all doable. Yeah, that's anything can help, happen in LMS, you know. So uh, last ball 12 runs of the inning, if they hit a six, anything uh, be, can be possible. That's well balled there by Rob Bainbridge. Punishes with a dot. He's gone for 35 from his three overs now. Come on, Scotland. Final two here. Come on. What do you think? Nine ball, 28 runs, and then last ball, six? <laughs> be good to watch. Be good to watch. <laughs> I'd like to see them get a little bit closer. Give themselves 20 off the last over, and it'll give them a chance, a sniff of victory. Uh, there, there, there could be some extra balls as well. So um, it shows 10 balls. Could be 12, 13 balls if they bowl some extras. Wonder who the Scots will pick to bowl this penultimate over here. Important over for Scotland. Just they want to go for Ronnie. no more than 10 this over, so that they can have a take the pressure off of the last over. Uh, the problem with the Indian side, if uh, Vaibhav Singh retires. I mean, new bat, uh, new batsmen will come in. Uh, could be difficult, you know, to straight away go for boundaries. Well, it, it, that's one of the things I like about last man stands uh, format is that you've got to have real depth in your batting team. So, generally in situations like this, that you will get tested out 
Yeah, of course, uh, uh, you know, team manager, or coach uh, or captain, they need to decide accordingly. You know, they, they must have one uh, big hitter on the side and the lower down the order. Singh's just walloped that for six, a flat bat, straight over mid on's head. And that's him retired, he's back in the hut, well batted. Singh, seven fours and one six, strike rate of 182. Really batted nicely for his country there. Shitij Budiraja will be the new man in. A lot of, lot of pressure on Shitij. Shitij to come in, as you say, and he's he doesn't have any sizes here. He's really got to hit the ball from. Yeah, right from the first ball. First you know, ball, ball. Yeah. He's got to go for a boundary. Doesn't need to necessarily hit it in the air, but he's got to have a good look at the field where the play, where the the bowler's been bowling. And see which areas he can hit it in the gap. One wicket from here will bring Wasim Jafar as well. So let's see how it That's goes. That's a good, good point there. Yeah. It's like the umpires are looking at their watch here and he's taking a bit of a time to get to the wicket. He might be timed out here unless he gets a move on. <laughs> Have you watched uh, much of the Indian side play? Do you know anything about Shittaj? Um, no, not really. I uh, don't uh, really know some guys uh, in Indian side. I only know a couple of guys. I know Rahul Kohli. So, what's happened here is, I'm just going to hand over the mic to the tournament director, um, Simon Mulbers. Hello. So basically, um, Shittaj, he injured himself bowling in one of the first overs of the game and he hasn't taken any part since then. Um, he's torn his pec, so he's gone off to the doctors to get that looked at, but basically can't bat, so he's been retired out. That's brought Wasim Jaffa back to the crease. It's a bit of an unusual one, but obviously he's got quite a serious muscle injury and can't uh, bats. But uh, yeah, as you see, Wasim hit his first ball for four there. Interesting turn of events. Thanks, Simon. That'll make this last couple overs uh, that much more exciting. Can all that changes things somewhat for Scotland and India? Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, um, uh, it's uh, really sad uh, whatever happened to Shitij. But, you know, sometimes uh, bad thing happens for good. Oh, through the covers, top edge. Oh! Slight misfield there, just yeah. the two. Wazim Jaffa slightly miscuing that one. He's had his feet up in the hut, watching the rest of his teammates and Singh smash the ball around. And he knows he doesn't even have time to get his eye in again. So I think he'll smash this one again. A bit cleaner if he gets hold of it. It's not so easy for Wasim as well. Goes to show just how difficult it is out there at the latter stages of the game. And again, I'm going to come back to Manpreet Singh, who just walked back to the <laughs> crease and was carving the South African bowlers all around the park. Yeah, of course. I mean, the, um, oh, uh, that's uh, in the gap and could be one bounce. Two bounces. This oh. is going to go. Oh, yeah. fancy footwork there from the Scotsman. I think a good decision by Vasim. Oh, and it's all happening out there. We've got to run out. Well, Wasim Jaffa is the last man standing here. Oh. And we've still got um, Singh in the hut. Yeah. Baba comes back. Another thing. <laughs> So, will LMS Singapore versus South Africa will repeat here? <laughs> it could be. What, what I think the Scots have got over South Africa in their arsenal of bowlers is it's much harder to hit a slow bowler on a big field like this. Um, whereas the South Africans kept on bowling their pace bowlers at the end, and I think that played into the, the Singaporeans' hands because, it, you know, they played the ball. Yeah, you know, I mean... 
the ground is uh, much um, uh, you know smaller as well so they uh, just uh, used the pace of yeah, the ball of so course, well yeah, and, and perhaps the south africans Missed a trick there by not bowling their spinner at the end at the death. Spinner or could be like a medium pacer could use their cutters or slower ones as well. Correct, yeah. correct. And I, not, not enough of that, I don't think. I think that's something they could look at and improve in their game. Yeah, moving forward, yeah. Any other tips for the, the South Africans, Kunal? <laughs> <laughs> I think these, uh, if uh, in their death bowling, if they can improve on this, that will be very beneficial for their team. Because as a bowler, uh, a medium pacer, if you want to bowl in the depth, you must have these three kind of deliveries. Slow one, cutters and yorkers. Let's see if Scotland have got that. 25 runs required from just the four balls now. And I think India have a snipper victory. That's what we wanted to see. Yeah, every ball six. Uh, that's first one. One down, three to go, you know? Yeah. So three ball 19s. So one more six, that will take 13. Vivab now on 53 of 29. It will still tie, uh, tie the game from here. I think 19. Last ball, 6 12. 12 plus 6, 18. <laughs> so we're going to, we might need to see um, a no ball here for them to have a chance. But uh, they do have now that it's two balls left. So, yeah, they can still win. Two balls. They need to yeah. go for maximums here. Yeah, they need two sixes. Is it the right man on strike? Vaibhav Singh. He has the whole, whole uh, sort of pressure currently. Let's, let's see if he's got that mental strength to, to hit the six. He managed to score a boundary. Twist. It's <laughs> a big twist, Jack, you know. 13 from one ball. Could be a tie if there is a legal delivery. <laughs> if they're able to hit a six. Rose is calling in the troops there for a quick chat. One ball to go. 13 run, runs to, to win, 12 to tie. Could we have our first tie of the tournament? Could be. Of course, this is just one of the pool games, so there won't be um, an eliminator over. They'll each. just share the points. Four points each. Four points each. The interesting thing is, uh, I mean, I'm a bit surprised the way Wasim Jaffer played. Last time I saw him in test cricket, I mean, now 27 ball 65. It, it just goes to show how adaptable these players are at yeah. the next level and how talented they are they really are you, you always think you can go and do that when you're sitting <laughs> on your armchair but it's not that easy when you're yeah. comparing them to 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 the amateur players and just take nothing away from some of the amateurs um, it's just a certain little level of ease with which they do it and that mental strength to come in here and not know the Indian setup and and come and perform like he has it's quite exceptional Razak again the same Compton you know real talent and they'll always have a pressure, you know, always uh, because when they play in amateur events, everyone expects them to perform as well. No, exactly. And um, I know I know Neil McKenzie once said he was going to take it, he, he thought in his head, he didn't want to, you know, play to his best because he was playing with amateurs and he got two ducks. He said, I'm not doing that again. He's got to, you know, when you go out there, you've got to play as hard as you can each game. And, and that's the last oh, top edge. Top edge going high. On the, oh! <laughs> so close. It's a matter of inches, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah. And the Scotland team are ecstatic with that win. Oh, what a victory for Scotland. They just survived a tie. <laughs> he didn't middle that ball. He just managed to hit uh, with the toe. Otherwise... That would have been yeah. a tie. I mean, that's how close it is. Small margins. I think hats off to the Indian side. They're really battled right to the end there at one stage we didn't think they would get close when yeah. the wickets were tumbling Quinal and um, I think they can be proud of that that innings yeah they really played well I mean um, 197 on this ground it's really difficult to chase uh, as you mentioned 175 180 is the pass score and uh, uh, you know chasing uh, playing in the second inning is always difficult yeah well, hats off to them. I think they can really be proud of them. And they're growing as the tournament goes. And certainly Wazim Jaffa's lifted their spirits from their opening games loss. So that's two two out of two for them. But they 
definitely going to be better in the third game and I think we're going to see a few wins from them as the tournament goes on. Of course, uh, they will. Um, I'm uh, pretty much confident they will bounce back uh, because uh, with Vasim Bhai on the side, uh, you know, um, uh, this will uh, boost their confidence. And this game uh, went a bit close in comparison to uh, their yesterday's game against Pakistan. So uh, slowly and steadily they're improving. So hopefully we'll be able to see some wins for them. Exactly. Thanks very much for your time, Canal. Thanks to all our viewers out there as the team shake hands. We're going to have a short break before we start the next match. Stay tuned on facebook.com forward slash last man stands. Thanks, Pion. So obviously as uh, we're just waiting here for the uh, test player in the Compton to uh, speak to uh, some of the Scottish, I think it's Fraser Watts, uh, we're just going to pass you across there to Nick. Just a few shots there of some of the Scottish players. They must be absolutely delighted. Complete change of emotion from yesterday after a disappointing day against England, but that'll be long forgotten after a famous victory over India. There's the groundsman Alex Kegg there working extremely hard. Keeping uh keeping the wicket looking as fine as ever. Personally think he needs to get his head up a bit straighter there. <laughs> but hey ho. Look, it's been a fantastic day's cricket here, and we've got one more day to go. Last man stands, uh, World Championship. World Series. And uh, there's a summary of uh, the game we've just watched then. Uh, LMS Scotland, uh, 196 for five. Rory Johnson on debut, 71 off 37. Fraser Watts, uh, 51 off 30. And Kazim Farid, 38 off 15. Pick of the bowlers was Wasim Jaffa, 1 for 28. And Dwidge, 1 for 31. And we're ready to go across to Nick Compton and Fraser Watts.
Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've just seen another cracking game. Scotland overturning one of the favourites, India. And what a game it was. To my right is uh, one of the losing players and star player, Wazim Jaffa. Had a great knock there, got 50 and then retired and came back in. Hit a couple of boundaries and got the game right down to the wire. Was that must have been uh, quite a debut for you there. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, very much, very much. First time I played LMS, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fantastic game. And how, was the, how were the conditions out there? Really good, really good. I, I think uh, the top batsmen, uh, the top two batsmen batted really well for them. I think we could have fielded a little bit better. Uh, if we gave away probably good 20-25 runs easily. Uh, but other than that, I think it's a great game. And you've been in good form this summer. You scored some runs in India and the Ranji and etc. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really enjoying it. Yeah, uh, been playing for Vidarbha. We won the Ranji Trophy. Been here playing for Walshaw Cricket Club in in Greater Manchester League, so really enjoying it. And the, and the body's still keeping good. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah, trying my best to stay fit and enjoy it. Getting younger, still timing the ball beautifully, mate. Well played, huh? Hey? Um, we go over to to Fraser Watts. Great to see you, mate. Well done. Thank you very much. Fantastic victory for Scotland and uh, another upset. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I think as was said, it's just a great game. You know, obviously we went in to play our best and, and we came out with a victory, but I think the biggest thing was the quality of the game. Such a great atmosphere. Two teams played really, really well and we just snuck it, which was brilliant. So You great. had a bit of a heart and mouth moment down on the boundary there where you sort of couldn't pull it in and it sort of all seemed like it was going Scotland's way and then the last <laughs> minute he almost hit a six. I was panicking there, I have to say. The second last ball, I should have really pulled that back in and made it impossible for India to win, but kept it tight, kept it interesting, kept the crowds uh, excited. That was my plan anyway. Oh, well done, mate. <laughs> well, what well in Scotland? Another upset in this competition. It gets more exciting by the game. Over to you.